Welcome to our next lesson in Galatians commentary. Today, we're going to start a two-part uh, series titled Freedom in Christ, and we'll be in Galatians chapter 5. We're slowly winding down Galatians. It's chapter 5 and then on to chapter 6. It's really exciting. So let's begin in chapter 5. Uh, and before we do, I just wanted to share personally. Uh, this is a very relevant topic, I would imagine, for a lot of us, and certainly for me on a very personal level. Just briefly, uh, I became a Christian uh, back in 2001. And before that, I came from a Hindu background. And I really wasn't a particularly religious person. Uh, I moved from India to America. I studied there. I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at that point. And um, I really was grateful to meet a group of people that were really um, helpful in me uh, coming to faith. Now, my first year of Christianity was awesome. Like, it was literally like a honeymoon period. Uh, I was just joyful. I was excited. But a year into my discipleship, a year into being a Christian, when I got, got stressed and so on, what I used to do, um, I slowly started going back to it. And, um, and for the first almost nine years of my Christian journey, pornography certainly was that big kind of, you know, the, the thing, the sin that I just couldn't break free. I tried different things. I'd get open, I'd confess, I'd, I'd, ask, I'd, I'd ask people for help and uh, I'd pray, I'd read my Bible, I'd fast. I wasn't experiencing this freedom. So as we read Galatians 5, I wanted to start there. Um, and then as we read, also share what are some things that's really helped me gain victory. So hopefully this lesson is helpful to you and um, whatever journey you are on, hopefully this helps you really encounter Jesus and know that we indeed can be free when the sun sets us free. And that is really to his glory. So let's start in Galatians chapter five and pick up in verse one. The Bible reads, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves to be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to you, every man who lets himself be circumcised, that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness which, for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever they may be, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I'm preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go all the way and emasculate themselves. I think there are three keys to grasping what it means to be free in Christ. The first one is the who. The second one is where. And then the third one is the what. So let me start by talking about the who. In Galatians 5, verse 1, it, the Bible reads, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Who sets us free? Jesus Christ. And this is so vital because I think in, in my own personal experience, um, and I think this might be even true, generally speaking, we start with the what, what do I do? Tell me what to do. And there's a place for that. Other times we might even say, let's start with the why. You start with the why, then, you know, when your why is solid and, and, and clear, then you will do whatever. Now, if the why is Jesus Christ, then sure, start with the why. But starting with the who really helps us to know who is it that sets us free. So let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that came by Christ 
Jesus. Now, Jesus redeems us. Jesus buys us back from slavery through his precious blood, and only he can set us free. And so that's the first point is really essential. Who? Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus Christ. Who can set us free? Only Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul's argument is, is that don't go back to the Torah. Don't go back to the elements, the stoichia, because they are not going to set you free. Only Jesus can set us free. The second point is we have to start with the where. And you might be wondering, what in the world does that even mean? Well, let's go to Galatians 5 verse 2. The Bible reads, mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he's obligated to obey the whole law or Torah. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace, for through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. Now, Paul is using pictorial narrative. He's painting images with words. Now, for us, when we read words like freedom, slavery, um, we don't locate ourselves in the scriptural narrative, although we should. But for Paul and those who are immersed in the Old Testament um, scriptures, those words will immediately invoke the second book of the Bible, which is Exodus. And so the Exodus story is of God's people in Egypt enslaved, brutally enslaved, and God, through his grace and his mighty hand, rescues his people. And then he gives them the law so that they can live out as his people. And the whole point of this is so that through them, the rest of the world will also be blessed, going back to Genesis 12. And, and, and one of the things, and I encourage you to read Exodus 40, you'll see this, that when God rescues his people, gives them, gives them the law. He also gives them instructions on building the tabernacle because God wants to come dwell among his people, which is itself a, um, goes back to Genesis 1 where God wants to come be with his creation. Within that narrative, what happens to God's people when they're rescued from Egypt? Obviously, they're given the law and they build this mobile tabernacle and then they travel the wilderness to get to the promised land. Now, that's a whole other lesson that I'm not going to get into um, because the journey itself need not have taken 40 years. And so that's a whole other thing I'm not going to touch right now. But I want us to keep that in mind because that's part of the narrative that Paul is invoking in Galatians and in Galatians 5, especially the new Exodus. Now, within this new Exodus narrative, Jesus has now uh, redeemed us, the whole of humanity, from slavery to sin, and has now, um, and and in His Spirit is now dwelling among us. Now we become the mobile tabernacle, so to speak, and we are now traveling. We're not in Egypt anymore, but we're not fully in the Promised Land either. So the where is where are we located in this grand narrative, and that is why Galatians starts with chapter one. In verse 3, Paul writes, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then it ends in Galatians 6, verse 15. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. So Galatians is bookended with, the, with this re new reality that King Jesus has launched in the midst of the old. And so as we talk about freedom, we have to start with the who. Jesus Christ redeems us. Only he can set us free. Only he has set us free. And then the where. Where are we? We're not in Egypt anymore. And, and that's so vital, as you can imagine. The where. We have to locate ourselves within the story at a new point in the story because of what Jesus has done in his death and resurrection. Now, the what, we'll get to the what in just a minute. But going back to my own struggles with pornography, now in 2009, somewhere like October or so of 2009, you know, I, I had a wake up call. Um, and I was reading Isaiah and, 
and you can read chapter one for yourself. It's really convicting. And so I had this realization of, man, I, I really need to repent of the sin of pornography or it's going gonna, it's gonna to just take me out. I'm going to leave God. And so by God's grace um, and, and, and the power of God's spirit and the help from God's people, it was really incredible how I did experience victory. And in fact, I haven't, by God's grace, uh, indulged, watched pornography of any kind since October of 2009, which again is to God be the glory. When I look back, I can definitely say that what helped is the who. You know, it's just going back to who, who liberates me, who frees me. And that also then started to um, help me with my identity in Christ. So the result was that I was completely open with people in my life. I, I wasn't afraid that what they would think of me because I was really focused on what God thinks of me. And being um, more, more focused on that, I was able to freely tell people in my life my triggers and what, who I, what's really going on inside me. And what's amazing, I had so many people who were very supportive, prayed with me, helped me. They, 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 they supported me. It's amazing ways. Like I never for one, like had anyone come to me and say, you know, what, what's wrong with you? Why, you know, are you stupid or none of that? You know, in fact, if anything, they started being open with me genuinely. And it was a real amazing breakthroughs that I was experiencing. And so again, the who really matters. And then the where, as I continually grew in my understanding of scripture um, and, and got help from others who are helping me with scriptures, a lot of the things, in fact, you, you, you're hearing me say and things I've learned, I've learned from, um, you know, specifically you know, Michael Burns, you know, if you know who that is, he's really been very instrumental in teaching me a lot of these things and, and then other books and commentaries and, and so on and so forth, but definitely really building a deep conviction on where, where am I and where are we in this story on a continual basis. I haven't arrived, I'll, I'll tell you that for sure. But it really helps, it helps to be free. It helps to live the lifestyle of, of, of being free. And then the what? In Galatians 5 verse 6, Paul writes, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. This is an amazing verse. The what, what do I do is faith expressing itself through love. And really when we put all three together, what does that mean? Well, my actions are born out of faith. Faith in whom? Jesus Christ and his redeeming work on the cross and his resurrection. Faith in trusting God and knowing that we're no longer in Egypt. Where are we in the story? We're at a different point in the story. We were free from Egypt. We are on our way to new creation and yet new creation is already here. That produces the result of faith expressing itself. There's a display of, there's a practice of, and it's all about love, right? And so the practicality of it is, for example, with the purity, um, you know, you might have heard this concept called amputation, basically means cut out those things that lead you to sin, which is very vital. In fact, you know, it's, it, 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 you have to cut it out. You know, you can't feed yourself that poison and then expect to, um, to not participate in it. That doesn't make sense, right? But that amputation is then, is, is grounded in faith in Jesus Christ, the redeeming love of Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? And so it's that faith in Jesus and the faith in trusting that he has uh, liberated me from Egypt and I'm at a different point. Where am I in the story? I'm in a different point in the story. Then that, act, that results in the action of amputating that sin or placing boundaries or confessing or what have you that I have to participate in uh, to, in that act of freedom as a freedom fighter, so to speak, to fight the battle of purity or whatever sin that might be, um, that, 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 that whatever fleshly sin that might still be there to um, entangle me again. And so freedom is real. It's an expression of God's amazing grace displayed in and through Jesus's redeeming love. And that we live this lifestyle of freedom. It's not a philosophical, intellectual thing that has no bearing in the real world. 
Now, I'll close out on this point. I, in my own experience of Christianity over the last almost 20 years, I would say that I've been on this freedom spectrum at many points in my walk with, with, with Jesus. On one end, I call it suppression. It's just to like grit my teeth and just suppress whatever desires, whatever I have, and just to be a good Christian person. On the extreme of that spectrum is the expression. It's like, I just want to do what makes me happy. I'm tired of suppressing myself. The, the experience of that becomes um, what I call yo-yo Christianity. You're like a yo-yo. And if you ever played with a yo-yo, you know, up and down, up and down. And that's kind of honestly the first almost nine, 10 years of my Christian life. I probably was a lot more like a yo-yo. Look at Galatians 5 verse 7. Bible reads, you are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. I love this verse. You are running a good race. I think we can all, in some level, at least I can definitely relate to it. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? It's that yo-yo ex experience, right? And the answer really, what I have come to discover and what the Bible says, and definitely Galatians, one of the key, concept, the key themes of Galatians is freedom is not about suppression or expression. Freedom is about who redeems us. And the answer is Jesus Christ. That is really the focal point of, of really the New Testament, for that matter, the whole Bible, that Christianity is not a set of rules or doctrine or, or belief system or what have you. Christianity is about a person, a very, very, very specific person. And that person is Jesus Christ. John 5, 39. And all of scripture points to him. And Jesus is God in flesh who came, walked this earth, who fulfilled the promise that God made to Abraham and the, and the whole narrative of scripture in his death and resurrection has unleashed new creation to redeem all of humanity, to invite all of humanity to come and be with him, be, be family. And so um, whatever other set of doctrines that come out of it is, is the fruit, even things like faith, repentance, baptism, love, um, whatever you want to, you know, whatever Christian doctrines you can think of, they're all the result of Jesus Christ. You take Jesus out of that equation, if you will, all of that stuff just collapses because he is the only re reason why the equation even functions, even works. So I want to close out in Romans 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are all justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. My question to you is, have you received the gift of redemption that is in Jesus Christ? I'm not asking if you're a Christian or if you're not, not a Christian. Because sometimes that becomes the binary equation, Christian, non-Christian. I'm asking, have you received the gift of redemption where Jesus bought us and brought us through his precious blood? Do you, have you received this amazing gift of redemption that is in Jesus Christ? They were justified freely, were declared in the right standing freely because of what Jesus has done, not because of what we had done. And then we respond to his amazing grace. And so if you haven't, and if you want to know more about it, I'm happy to help you, walk with you, um, and, and assist you in your journey to know Jesus Christ, to, to leave Egypt, because what he, has, he has released us from Egypt. And so we can walk together to experience the amazing grace of God together. Hopefully this lesson has been helpful. Uh, there's so much more to talk about, as you can imagine. I love this chapter. I love this topic. Um, look forward to seeing you again next week. In part two of Freedom in Christ, we'll talk about living as redeemed people of the King. Till then, have a great week and God bless you.